Oi guys, welcome back to Valorant News. After a sensational victory in Masters Madrid, Sentinels are the heavy favourites to go in to potentially dominate the rest of this Valorant season. But John QT says they can potentially play even better. Despite being the highest rated player on Sentinels by some metrics this tournament, John QT, he reckons he as an individual can play even better. And I imagine the rest of the team does too. Can this Sentinel roster get even scarier? Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. First of all, some roster stuff to discuss. There's been talk as well that Sinatra heading back out to LA in the near future. That is just something to keep your eyes on. But really, we've got to talk about Crew and some of the teams in the Americas. They confirmed that Heat is going to be joining their roster. So they've made the announcement that MTA will be going to the bench of the team. I think he was previously injured for some time and Heat is going to be coming through. So yeah, we'll see if this helps the Crew guys. Honestly, every team in the Americas has to be looking at Sentinels knowing that they are the target. But at the same time, teams like NRG will think, damn, if we'd have just beaten Sentinels on that sunset that went to an overtime and tens had that 3k that got Sentinels over the line there, you know, Sin might not have even made it to Masters Madrid, let alone go on to win the entire thing, right? But the Americas are super stacked, but it's quite clear that for many teams, if you want to actually make the World Championship or if you want to make Shanghai, for example, you're going to need to be significantly better. And with Sen in that region, with Loud in that region, with Lev and with NRG and these other teams, it's just so hard. Cloud9 making moves. We've got G2 making moves. So Crew are also deciding to make moves, as are Furia, actually. Now, Noswa, formerly of La Viaton, they got rid of him, of course, made the controversial roster change. Com came in. I don't know if there's still underlying frictions behind the scenes as a result of that. There quite possibly is. We don't know. But at the time, the organisation, or the players, were coming out and effectively, even publicly, criticising the way their coaching staff had treated the situation. So, you know, but they're doing okay, Lev. They don't seem to be making a roster change. But if the season gets properly underway for these guys and they don't seem to show the levels they want to show, then there is something, of course, to be said on that. But Furia have confirmed Liazzi is going to be gone. So announcing Liazzi's out of the lineup. So, of course, they need a fifth player, ASA. P and, you know, maybe put two and two together in terms of whether or not we could go here. Sure, could they get Pancada in? Would it make sense? Probably not. But, um, and I don't really think that Pancada at this point wants to go to Furia anymore. He definitely apparently did, and it was on the table. Then the health issues came along, so hopefully Pancada's you know, improving and getting better. But if they were now to come to him now and say, hey, you know, are you well again? Let's do the deal. Maybe he'd say yes, but I feel like if I'm Pancada, I'm biding my time a little bit more to see how Lev and to see how Loud gets on at the start of the season because Loud finishing fourth at Masters Madrid, especially with Sentinels winning it, and the fact that they've lost now a good couple of times to Sentinels shows they might still need another gear if they want to be the best team in the world again, Loud. So there's something to be said potentially on that as well. Just quickly on Sully, because he was obviously planning to be part of the production talent again this year, but he was discussing how exactly he got let go really from the broadcast talent. And I guess you can look at this from both angles but I do think that often I mean the broadcast talent industry is so cutthroat it's honestly kind of absurd to me and as Sally says yeah everyone here deserves to be here but he was not you know not given an email a DM a call or text or anything like this to say that he'd been removed he found out that he was gone when this announcement dropped which I don't think should really be the norm but um this is how a lot of these publishers operate especially right games are a history of doing stuff like this but of course we talked about the Americas region a couple of seconds ago they are are now pretty much, I would say, announcing themselves as the strongest region. That's certainly been the case for the last year or so, the Americas, ever since really franchising came into effect. This, though, is all time numbers. So every region's achievements, of course, the Chinese region has only just started to exist in the Valorant world. So, you know, we'll see how Edward Gaming could do, although they did get completely annihilated by loud this tournament. Pacific, they've never won an event. They've got a few seconds, a few third places. This tournament, of course, second and third for Genji and Paper X. So, you know, they've gone from having one team getting third or seconds to now having two teams very competitive. So it's probably only a matter of time until a Pacific team wins an event because we've seen plenty from EMEA and from the Americas now. So for some time during 2021, it was all about Gambit and teams like that. Champs 2021 was a great example. Ascend, of course, getting the victory there. But we got Reykjavik, you know, Champs 2022 with Louds getting on top and, of course, Optic get the time as it was. Then the lock-in comes around. Again, Fnatic win Tokyo. They win the lock-in. But since then, it's been Champs has gone to Evil G. 
genius is. And Madrid has gone to Sentils, of course, but can they get even better Sentils? That is the question. They've had a phenomenal run over the last few months. The level of play they showed at the Africa TV tournament was a good enough level to win international events. The question was, would they be able to improve on that level with other teams also going to be leveling up? Could they maintain that performance? I was always pretty confident that they could. I think they've got the coaching staff behind them, they've got the players behind them, and they've got the mentality to become a winning force. But, you know, winning is not easy, obviously. Winning is incredibly challenging at this level of competition. But winning is the easy part. The harder part is maintaining that level. Every team in the world will be looking at Sentinels now. But to be honest, they've been looking at Sentinels for some time. Ever since the Africa TV tournament, teams have been looking at Sentinels and the way that they play and their setups and their compositions and their strategy and everything like this. And certainly that would have been true after they won the America's kickoff against Loud in the finals. But still, they went to the event and they won it. They took down Genji in a phenomenal finals. 1.66 million viewers in this grand finals. The most watched Valorant game of all time. And it maybe shouldn't be a massive surprise that Sentinels back on top has led to this snow. But I wanted to share a couple of clips here from FNS discussing how he's you know, frustrated that he's not on the main stage anymore, but also what he thinks about John QT, but also John QT himself with some discussion on whether they can get even better because he believes they quite possibly can. Wait, is Jordan about to have the same amount of Mousers ones as me? I can't let that happen. I'm taking the jacket off. Look at him, ice cold. I think John QT is my favorite in-game leader in the world right now. Is that Glaze? I think, th because I think he calls exactly like how I would want my caller to call. That's why. I do like Sadak too though. Of course I like those guys, but I'm saying like in terms of just in-game stuff, I think John Cutie has been the most impressive to me. Think about it, it's his rookie year, guys. It's his rookie year on the stage and he's already in the grand final. I mean, to be fair, on my, my rookie land, I also made the grand final in Valorant, but we lost to Gambit. He do be like me. To be fair, like, your boy also made the grand final on his first go. But, like, I had to play Redgar. Stop glazing yourself? Alright, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'm just jealous that I'm, on, I'm there on stage and I'm not. That's the honest truth. I miss this stage. I have to self-glaze to, uh, to... It's like an insecurity blanket. You know what I mean? Like, me and Joel were trolling the, like, uh, the Valorant viewership, or, like, <laughs> like in this offseason. We were like, the Valorant viewership is so down. Like, people are not interested in Valorant anymore. It's like, we were just like saying like the 2021 train is gone, but then we were like, we we're like, we just need to win because like Sentinels has, have such a f big fan base and if we're winning, we're bringing Valorant greatness back. And I think, I think the train is back. We're like pulling the train, choo choo, like pulling it. I don't know. I feel like if Riot is smart, they just give us the, the thing is, if I'm right, I give Sentinels the easy groups, but then they give us some deadly ass groups. But like, also, I don't know, maybe they're... They cooking. Wait, was our run the hardest run of all time? Just think about it though. Stacked kickoff, stacked play in. Actually, I know I was super high rated, but I actually didn't think I played that good. I don't know. Like, I could play way better. I don't know. I was, uh, I was, uh, yeah. There were like a lot of things outside the game that was bothering me. So I didn't like play to my best. Yeah, but I mean, the competition is gonna get harder. Like, obviously. Like, you know what they say, like, harder to stay on top than get to it. So we just. Need to not get complacent. I'll be Gucci. So this is Sentinel's run so far this season. This is from late last year. G2 versus Sen Showmatch that they won. They won their own Invitational, of course, when they did that at the start of... Actually, it was in November right last year. Then they played the Africa TV tournament in December. They won that against Paper X in the finals, winning every match they played. The kickoff, though, they lost to Loud. They lost to G2, but that was kind of a Mickey Mouse series. They'd already qualified after winning map one. But, I mean, look at the teams they've beaten here. Yeah. Even if we exclude the Africa TV League kickoff, 100T, Lev, MIBR, NRG, Loud, Heretics, Carmen Corp, Loud, Paper X, Gen G. Like, it doesn't really get any stronger than that on an international level as it presently stands. And they've won everything they've needed to with arguably the hardest roads they could possibly have had. John QT's career, by the way, as well, is absurd. Given the fact that this is his rookie year, I think it's easy to forget and overlook that. The John QT, the IGL of the biggest brands in at least, you know, the American side of Valorant, and sure, Loud is a different beast when it comes to Brazil, but, you know, from North American side, from the clout's perspective, Sentinel's probably the most pressure you're going to get on an organization, comes in as a rookie to in-game lead the team, 
and achieves this, what he's achieved. This guy might be on pace to go down as the greatest Valorant in-game leader of all time. I mean, you know, we've got to be honest about it. Sadak is phenomenal, but what he's doing with Sentinels cannot be understated. And this is his results in you know, the last year, really, let's say going back to the M80 side of challenges, winning all of the splits, winning the face-off, of course, eventually second at the Ascension Americas when they lost to the guards. And in many ways, that might have been a blessing in disguise for John QT, right? Because after that loss, he got the Sentinels call up. We didn't really know who their IGL was going to be. We thought it was FNS for some time. It wasn't. Since then, they've won everything. The show matches, the Invitationals, and now the Americas kickoff and Masters Madrid. It's just all Ws, apart from the Ascension Americas and the Sentinels off-season 5k bounty show match, which they lost to MXS, which is, of course, here on the Liquipedia. Xander, though, and the other guys in M80... Didn't get quite so lucky, right? And this is how it was a blessing in disguise for some. But I'm sure that Xander would have been in the league, obviously, if they'd have won the Ascension tournament. And this is... Xander's still thinking about that, right? Because as he says, being able to do what Sentinels did to overcome a two-map disadvantage in the vetoes against Gen.G was really impressive. Sadly, something we couldn't do last year in the Ascension finals. Congrats to Zeltis. Congrats to John QT. That's what you get when you work harder than everybody else. And that's the other point that, you know, people sometimes have overlooked with Sentinels is just how hard this team works. But I also think that just based on their kind of reputation over the last couple of years, that they don't necessarily work the hardest, I think that as well as uh, kind of turn the tide in some way. This, by the way, the numbers though, because John QT says he can play better. And that is a scary sign. And well, look, he wouldn't say that if he doesn't think it's true. And of course, he was also, you know, Ramadan was during this tournament. Cannot be easy for players such as John QT, Muslim players, to go through that. The fasting, you know, no eating, no drinking during the daylight hours. And to play and to call on this level with that in mind is just incredibly impressive. Rians was the same thing, of course, in Team Heretics, and he had a good event as well. But John QT was on this at least, the second highest rated player to Zekin, who had a 1.13 rating, John QT with a 1.12, 10 to 1.07, and you can look at the rating and you can debate how impactful that is, but even KD or average damage per rounds, these are some relevant numbers to look at. And to round out the team, Zelsa's had a 1.01 and Sassy had a 0.97, so, you know, John QT played a phenomenal tournament, and by the numbers, these were the top rated players from the playoffs, Toys of Loud had a 1.17, but John QT in the playoffs a 1.13, Zekin a 1.12, Tens and Zelsas are here as well. But um, John QT was the highest rated Sentinels player in the playoffs as the in-game leader. And he was calling the shots. And there were things outside of the game that were affecting him. So, you know, if he can get better, and I think that, you know, the other guys can play better as well. That is the scary thing, I think, for Sentinels, that, you know, they can play better Valorant than they have done. Same is true for other teams, but I don't think it's going to be easy to usurp these guys right now as the best team in the world. So, very much interested in your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.